Alex Mitchell. That's me. The other face of Hafu Historical Aviation Film Unit. Not many people know that, but here you are on film for the first time. That's because I usually try and hide a lot. Right. Hasn't worked today. So we're out the back blocks of rural Canterbury today with Wayne, one of our Hafu gophers. Good to see you again, Wayne. Yeah, good to see you guys here. So what is it that we're going to go and see today? We're going to go and see my 1951 David Brown crop muster that I bought as a bit of a wreck. And you can see it standing here today. Doesn't look quite such a wreck. So we've got yours and two others, I believe. That's correct. We've obviously got mine. The other one, which is the one standing over here, is also a 1951 David Brown crop master, which I bought as a Spears tractor to get my one back on the road, so to speak. Except when we went and saw it, it was way too good to wreck. And as it turned out, it's also completely different, despite being six months older. It's shorter and there's a whole raft of things about it that wouldn't fit on mine. So I got the wheels off at the tyres, a couple of switches, seats and a few other things that I got off the tractor which are on mine and then I unsold that for what I paid for it and then it was unsold again to Phil and we've seen it today. He has brought the tractor back from the dead and it's running and it is a pleasure to see it saved basically because it, it was going to be wrecked. Right. So we've got three David Brown crop masters, same so, place, all, <coughs> all going. The third one is a super crop master. Well, I must get that right. All right, so they all look super to me, but we don't go there. So uh, let's take them out, give them a run, see how it goes. Crazy not to. Half the thing is just to keep the tractors together and keep yes. them running yes. and then yeah. it's an incentive to keep them going rather than just take bits off them or just leave them under the trees they then deteriorate and after a period of time there's quite a bit involved and get them going again. So. Or they just get junked and yeah. thrown away because yeah they're not going to make more of these and they'll just be quietly less yeah. and less around so they do need to be saved if possible. Yeah, there's just a few things about these which are just quite nice. They're such a great looking tractor with that horseshoe shroud. Yeah, Yeah, a lot of people used to take them off because they're an inconvenience. Oh, they're a real pain to yeah. climb on and off yeah. with it on, but they just look so nice with them on. And of course that also defines, as soon as you see that you know it's a crop master. Yeah. still being used lots yeah, yeah. at Woodford Glen when they yeah. go to tow away cars one of the ones they use is a David Brown 990 yeah. it still runs fine I suspect it's been there for many many years they just built very good tractors which really don't need much to keep keep the things going at the end of the day after 70 years we didn't do much to mine to get it to run and do stuff really. I suspect in 40 years time you won't be standing here with uh, tractors of 20 years ago and saying I've just restored my whatever it was because you, you can't. This is probably the first time we've had three of these in a field for quite a while I would yeah. imagine. Yeah with obviously a bit of difference here, the middle one being a 1951, about March I think, is that when that one? Oh, I'm think not it, sure. I think not it sure. was March, yeah, which yeah. was obviously the one that was bought yeah. as a Spears tractor for my crop master, which is about six months younger. But yeah. if you actually have a good look at the two tractors, you'll see there's actually quite a bit of difference in it. The one in the middle is actually a little bit shorter, 
which meant we couldn't use any of the panels off it which is what I was getting it for the steering wheel which turned out to be as bad as the one I had so in the end I got the tyres and wheels off it a couple of switches and a few other bits and bobs and then unsold it and then it got unsold again and here it is in the field as a running working mm. tractor which yeah. is particularly good because we thought it was going to be wrecked and it's been saved yeah. good work yeah. yeah but yeah, yeah it is amazing that they look exactly the same but they're yeah, actually right. not and they're only six months apart yeah you can tell by the center one that it's got the older engine on it because it's got the gear driven generator so oh, yeah. and the carburetor I believe faces the other way so yes it does yeah there's, yeah there's a whole bunch of things which unfortunately we couldn't see in the photos when we were looking at it but the biggest clue is three mounting points for the side panel and the later one's got four so there's yeah yeah it was just a bit of a shame really so this is longer the whole thing yep yeah. by it's an inch or an inch and a half or something I think yeah, it's also got the twin filler, so it's got a reserve, a complete reserve fuel tank on it. So oh, you've got yes. another filler at the back there, whereas, oh, yeah, cause obviously whereas the other ones just have, I think, have a standpipe in the tanks, just so the tank is just one level, yeah, one. Yeah. So these, these three all originated from Canterbury back in the day? Oh, we don't know the real No history. idea. This yeah. one yeah. came from up Nelson Way. So it may have been a Nelson area tractor, you just don't know. Yeah. No idea about mine, I have no idea. Yeah. It was just found as a bit of a wreck, so. Yeah. And the difference between these two and the one you're standing up against? The word super. <laughs> <laughs> and horsepower, and wheels as you can see. Yeah, if, if, uh, if you have a look at the wheels, the wheels are considerably bigger. Yeah. And tyres are much better yeah. on a super crop master. The bore is an eighth of an inch wider, isn't it? Is it an eighth, eighth of an inch? Oh. No. So how much does that increase the capacity of the engine? Well, unfortunately Pete's not here because he has it down pat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's a little bit, it's an yeah. another yeah. Th three or four horsepower I think, oh, is yeah. what the books state. And I think they put a few more RPMs on them too, I think. So. Oh, yeah. 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 They changed the carb too, I think, so I th suspect yeah. the carb is a bit less uh, it's pouring also, fuel down the throat. It's also got a bigger air cleaner. If you look at those ones, yeah. they've got a smaller air cleaner. Well, this one here has a bigger air cleaner on it. So. Probably just designed to flow more air so the car gets a better so what fuel mixture. What would they be doing when they're working? What do you reckon? About, I think it's less than 2,000, probably about 1,700 or so. They're not, not a fast revving motor. Yeah. Yeah, they, they don't really respond well if you open the throttle hard. Yeah. They, they still work, but yeah. they, they, they're just not happy. So I'd, I'd say you're between 16 and 1700 right. so without the, having a yeah. rev counter. Yeah. It's just yeah. what it feels. Yeah. The, other thing you can, happy. the other thing you can see with this one here is this has had um, the old problem with old tractors where the exhaust manifold rots out because the exhaust manifold and the inlet manifold were a, a one piece setup. Now they rot out in there and this particular one's been cut off from that and as a result you're not getting the heat from the direct heat from the exhaust heating the inlet manifold and this is probably why it just runs a little bit rougher because it's not vaporising the, the petrol quite the same. So. so there's not actually a water jacket in that manifold either is it? No, <laughs> no, no, it's all done by all those earlier vehicles are all done by heat, yeah, heat, direct, heat all the exhaust the manifold, heating the inlet manifold yeah. and someone's hacked the bonnet. Well, at some stage too, so yeah. that it goes. Well, it's a very, very nice one, isn't it? And it's always yeah. good to see them running yeah. in the various. Yeah. Well, it's a privilege to drive stats. something as older than me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was born in '52. Yeah. You wouldn't need to go to the gym after driving one of these all day, would it? I mean, you'd give your arms a good workout. Well, when we were kids, that's what my dad was on our farm, was yes. one of these things. Yeah. 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 Great little tractor, just went and went and went. Yep. Yeah, well, 
last last yeah. of the fuel powered ones really weren't they before yeah. they started to go to diesel yeah. and then diesel took over yeah well, i can just remember the neighboring farm at home had one um, i'm not too sure it, it certainly just, it looked the same what i remember as a, as a kid the last i saw of it was getting towed away because it had run away down a hill and smashed off the body the front front uh, well, we, when we were kids and that dad used to, we used to go out feeding hay, so we used to have a, a feeding hay to the cattle and that, so we had a, a, a port, or what well, you call it, a hydraulic port, but it was just a deck yeah. that connected to the three-point linkage, and, yeah. and of course we'd, we seat on the side there, yeah. two people can go for it, and then yeah, it was an easy way of getting just two of you out to feed the cattle out, and dad would get out and yeah. feed the hay out off the back while we were privileged to uh, yeah, was, to steer them, you know. So yeah, it was the first driving I did. Was actually you know, yeah. driving the tractor feed out home. Yeah. I remember jerking the bloody clutch one time. Dad fell mm -hmm. off. Man, did I get an earful? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, shall we have a very quick chat about what we did to this to actually get it running properly? So basically, when this came home, we had water in the oil and a few other issues, but we got it running after about two hours work or something of that sort of order and it was running pete pete drove drove it around his yard for a little bit and then we had to sort out the water and the oil which was the liner seals which unfortunately we had to do twice didn't we feel yeah that was mainly due to the crack in the block though wasn't it yeah there was a there was a small small crack in the top of the block that had been fixed but not fixed particularly well and it had a very small two or three thousand gap in it which allowed water into the cylinders which created a few issues so two sets of liner seals having fixed the block valve valve grind and rings basically and that was all that was done to the thing and it's running sweet as a nut just well, goes to show how good they were front axle has been rebuilt oh yeah yeah new kingpins new pivot arm i guess you call it an arm and bearings so the front's now pretty good. Steering box has had new bushes put in it. And we've also put grease nipples everywhere we can. We didn't have them before, which should stop some of those issues before. New steering wheel, because the Cropmaster steering wheel is specific to the Cropmaster. Uh, clean up and a paint job. And then just to finish up, we put these new catches on. And what we have is a fairly tidy looking tractor that runs quite well. Were they always 12 volt? No, no, that one in the centre there was originally 6 volt. And um, I've got it running on 12 volts now by just putting a 12 volt regulator on it. So it all seems to be working okay at the moment, but you've got to put a few revs on it for it to charge a wee bit, but hey, it works. So, yeah. I think it just depends because I think some had two 6 volt batteries, one either side, oh, yeah. but they were actually 12 volt yeah, tractors yeah. apparently. Yeah, yeah. It's really hard to read the books without knowing because they seem to change stuff and mix and match all the time. Like, like yeah. the badge on the side of the Super Cropmaster that appears to be sp specific to New Zealand. It wasn't put on anything else, but you just don't know. It's just mm. They just seem to mix and match. But they're certainly great little tractors.
this may be the only time I appear on camera, in case anyone's wondering. <laughs> That'll do us. Hi there, I'm Wayne Bradley. If you enjoyed this video and would like to support the Historical Aviation Film Unit to make more films like this, hit the join button and become a member. This support really helps the guys continue the mission. For those of you who have already become members, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated.